you've been paying attention to American high-speed rail politics, there's one project that sticks out like a sore thumb. It's potentially the most profitable high-speed railroad imaginable, and it's a route that isn't even currently connected by any direct rail link. You guessed it, it's the California High-Speed Rail Project. High-speed rail connecting two of California's largest cities, Los Angeles and San Francisco, has always been a dream for Californians since the 1990s, but it all started when Los Angeles started to improve its public transit systems. Throughout the 60s and 70s, Los Angeles was one of the fastest growing cities in America, and with a rapidly growing economy came the need for public transit. In 1973, the Southern California Association of Governments conducted a study as to whether a commuter rail would benefit Los Angeles. The state recommended two round trips per day between Oxnard and Los Angeles. This train was to utilize the Southern Pacific Coastline, a single line track between the two aforementioned cities. Despite broad public approval of the project, Southern Pacific objected to the proposal, saying that the four additional trains per day would disrupt freight traffic. After almost 10 years of back and forth between the two agencies, an agreement was finally reached and service would begin on October 18th, 1982, under the moniker Caltrain. No, not that Caltrain, a slower Caltrain that was operated by Southern Pacific. After about a year of trains, the service was found to be wildly unpopular, but it continued with weak ridership and dilapidated equipment until March 1st, 1983, when a storm wiped out the trestle bridge along the line. The bridge was planned to be repaired, and service was supposed to resume after that, but when the bridge was fixed, Caltrain never returned. With almost no public transit in Los Angeles, the city continued to rapidly expand well into the 1990s. Instead of trains, the city used buses, which contributed to a few things LA was known for in the 1990s, smog, graffiti, and traffic. The state, recognizing the problem, quickly put a plan into action. First, Amtrak began a service to connect Los Angeles to San Juan Capistrano, known as the Orange County Commuter, which was supposed to be a temporary filler for what was to come. On May 25, 1990, Senate Bill 1402 was signed into law, requiring the state to come up with a plan for Southern California high-speed rail service by the end of that year. By October of 1990, the state had purchased 175 miles of track from the Southern Pacific, and by 1991, service was almost ready to commence with a fleet of Bombardier bi-level cars and F-59 PHs in a clean new Metrolink paint scheme. The first day of service was on October 26, 1992 on the Ventura, Santa Clarita, and San Bernardino lines. This service turned out to be vastly more popular with commuters as the trains were clean, new, and fast. By 1993, the Riverside line was completed and the Orange County line service had been transferred from Amtrak to Metrolink. Throughout the rest of the 90s and early 2000s, the service was continuously expanded and Metrolink still runs to this day, but that's a story for another time. Let's go back to the early 90s when Metrolink was still being planned, specifically 1996. In 1996, the California High Speed Rail Authority, which I'll refer to as the CHSRA, was formed to start planning a high speed rail ballot measure for 1998 or 2000. This plan was created to keep California from falling behind in terms of having a viable high-speed rail network like the Northeast. By 1998, a plan had been laid out for a high-speed rail system that would connect parts of California that had previously never been connected by a passenger train of any speed. The plan began with two phases. Phase 1 would connect San Francisco with Los Angeles via the Central Valley, and Phase 2 would expand the line north from San Francisco to Sacramento, and south from Los Angeles to San Diego. In the election of 2000, this bill was approved and environmental studies began. By 2008, the CHSRA was ready to build, and voters approved $9 billion in funding to begin construction of this state-owned high-speed rail. By 2011, the federal government funded the program another $6 billion, and the project continued to be funded for a few more years, yet no construction began. In 2012, the project was approved by Governor Jerry Brown, yet there was still not enough funding, and there was no concrete plan for construction. The project was barely planned out, and the government continued to throw money at it in hopes of fixing the management issues. I guess that finally paid off, as on January 6, 2015, the ground was finally broken for construction on the project. Not bad, only 20 years from conception to groundbreaking. Unlike other high-speed rail systems under construction around the country, most of the line would be elevated as to not disrupt what's going on on the ground as much, and to not slow down trains with grade crossings. This meant the project would be a lot more expensive, but in turn the trains would be faster. Travel times between San Francisco and Los Angeles will be projected to be under 3 hours with an average speed of 200 miles per hour. Since this project was modeled off the high-speed rail networks in Europe and Asia, it would need some fitting, non-American looking trains. So in January of 2015, as construction was beginning, California High-Speed Rail Authority issued a request for complete train sets with a list of requirements which are as follows. 
Train sets must be able to sustain continuous speeds of up to 220 miles per hour, have a top speed of 242 miles per hour, a lifespan of at least 30 years, a length no longer than 680 feet, the ability to double up trains as they do in Japan and France, not exceed 26 decibels at 220 miles per hour, have at least 450 seats and carry 8 bicycles, have business class and first class, have space for wheelchairs, have food service, be optimized for onboard internet, and have earthquake safety systems because California is prone to earthquakes. Ten separate companies expressed interest in building these cars, and now in 2021 that number has been whittled down to seven companies due to companies merging and going bankrupt. As of right now, all we know is that the railroad will initially purchase 15 to 20 trains, but eventually there will be as many as 95 train sets for phase one from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Right now, the railroad is using this rendered image of what trains will look like, but this is nothing more than a mock-up. Trains may look completely different. Overall, the California High Speed Rail project is the furthest behind and the slowest moving, but it seems that President Biden wants to make big steps towards American High Speed Rail, so it may not be much longer before this project really starts moving. If California High Speed Rail is ever completed, it may be the largest and fastest high speed rail in the country. Who knows? This concludes today's episode of High Speed Rail Week. This episode is part of a bigger series of four other mini docs. Click the video on the left to see yesterday's episode and the video on the right to see tomorrow's episode. If you're watching this when it's new, there's probably no video there because tomorrow's video isn't out yet, so be sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's episode at noon Eastern. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Until next time.